Hi, this is JR, the Text Patent Saigon. I wanted to share some videos with you today. They're kind of underrated videos. They, they never got a lot of views. Out of uh, the 130 or 40 videos I've done, they were some of the worst. They really didn't get uh, much attention. But I kind of like these videos and thought I'd share them with you today. You can kind of binge watch them if you want to. The first video, I shot it in February of 2019, and it's had a lot of names. It's kidnapped the neighbor's cat, killing the neighbor's cat, uh, several names like that. I've changed it trying to get views, but it never really got any views. But it's an important video because it's about Jellybone, our cat, and he's been such a pleasure that I really wanted to uh, have a good video explaining how we got the boy. This is the first place that I ever saw the neighbor's cat. He was on a ladder in front of this house with his little litter mate. They were about six weeks old. One was a gray striped cat. The other was a yellow and um, white striped cat. They were really cute. I went over and tried to play with them a little bit. and. They were both pretty friendly. The little yellow one was a little shy, but the striped cat was a real friendly cat. About a year later, I saw the gray striped cat. He was digging in a trash can out in front of one of the houses in the neighborhood. Later, I saw the little guy again. He was hanging out in front of my neighbor's house. Some of the people there looked like they might be taking care of him, but I'm not sure but he stayed very close to their door, so maybe they were feeding him. Some of the other neighbors didn't like him so much. They throw rocks at him. One of the neighbors even talked about using mouse poison on him. So I think that if uh, he didn't quit digging in the trash cans and making a mess and killing my neighbor's chickens and pigeons, that uh, he was probably gonna get killed. A little later on, my neighbors moved out. I figured they took the cat with them. But a few days later, I saw him outside. He was laying in front of their door. The little guy was, was a mess. We caught him a couple of times sneaking into our house. He'd come through the transom window over the front gate, sneak in and eat our cat Oreo's food. Then he had escaped the same way he came in. He was pretty clever. After two or three times of this, I decided I'd go see if I could find him. He was, he was a bit hard to find. The little guy was really good at hiding. He'd hide on the roof. He'd climb right up the side of our house, or the side of our gate, and go on the roof. So there he was most of the time. At nighttime, he was making a big, big bunch of noise with the little girl cat up there. So he had a girlfriend already. The neighbors started complaining about that too because he'd keep people awake all night long. I knew that if somebody didn't do something about him pretty soon, he was going to wind up dead. He'd either get poisoned, run over by a motorbike, or eaten. They do eat cats here, you know. He was a pretty big cat. I think he would have made a nice meal for somebody. Later, I ran into him. He was asleep in front of the neighbor's house again. Even though they weren't living there, he was there. I decided to see if he'd come in the house. I wasn't sure if he'd run or if he'd uh, let me pick him up. So I went over and he just laid there. He rolled over on his back. We gave him some food. He had a big meal, drank a lot of water, and hung around for a little while. Pretty soon, I saw him sleeping on the back of my motorcycle seat. I think it's definitely true, if you feed a cat, it's your cat. Rhea named him Jellybone. It's a good name. When you pick that cat up, it's like his bones turn to jelly. He just hangs there. It's so cute. So the name stuck. We called him Jellybone, and his nickname, Bonbone. Bon. It didn't take long for the little guy to become a big part of our family. So why did I name this video Killing the Neighbor's Cat? It's because he probably wouldn't have had a chance if he'd been left outside. 
somebody would have killed him for digging in their trash or killing their pigeons or chickens or he might have gotten poisoned. So we decided to take him in and make him our cat. On the serious side of things, having a pet in Vietnam is a little different. A lot of people didn't have pets for a long time because Vietnam was real poor. Pets were seen a lot of times as food. So people didn't keep dogs and cats, they ate them. Now, people are a little wealthier and they've learned to love these little critters. So that's the story about how Jellybone became our cat. A lot of the people in Vietnam are keeping pets now. They have dogs, a lot of dogs, uh, some cats, uh, all kinds of pets. Birds are real popular too. Near our house is a really nice veterinary clinic where we took Jellybone to get neutered. He didn't like that much, but it was a necessity or he'd be on the roof with the neighbor's cat all the time and probably still be a victim of uh, violence. But anyway, he, uh, we took him over there and the care was outstanding. They scheduled follow-up visits um, and it took about a week total to get him back on his feet and checked out and he was fine. People here take good care of their pets. My neighbors have several dogs and they're always out bathing the dogs, walking the dogs. It makes me feel good to see that. The story about Vietnamese always eating their dogs is true but they don't eat their pets. And it's really becoming unpopular, especially in the cities, for people to, you know, to eat pets. There is still a problem with snatchers. Sometimes snatchers will steal people's pets and they wind up on the dinner table somewhere. It's a terrible problem. And the penalties are really stiff if you get caught. So maybe in a few years, it'll be so unpopular that people won't do that anymore. I hope so. I really don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing it in the newspaper either. Today's the Tet holiday. I'm really glad to be out. I was lucky to find a coffee shop that's open. Nearly everything's closed today. The town's pretty slow. Actually, this year there's more activity though than usual. Last year and several years ago, when the city was uh, having their Tet holiday, the place would really be empty. But I'm kind of surprised. There's more people out than usual, more than I expected. And also, if you'd like to watch Jellybone in action, check out Fuzzy Logic. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video. The next video is part of my social consciousness videos. Uh, this one's called Post No Bills, and it was about uh, all the signs and stickers that people put all over everything here in uh, Saigon, advertising various products, everything from cleaning the septic tank to uh, installment loans. So I thought this one uh, kind of showed that I'm socially responsible and I'm trying to make people aware of a problem. Hi, this is JR. I'm the Texpat in Saigon. Today we're going to talk about all the signs that are stuck all over the walls and poles here in Saigon. I've had several people ask me about them and what they mean. So today we'll take a look at some of them and I'll try to, to uh, translate some of them for you so you know what's up. These signs are everywhere. They're on the walls all over the place when you are walking around the city. They're also on the poles. I'll shoot some pictures of that too. I've cleaned the signs off the pole, power pole by my house several times. Uh, they just return. You'll be uh, looking at a clean pole one day and you come back the next day and the thing's covered with stickers again, little signs. Here's one near my house. So it's kind of a problem. I, I remember back in the old days in the comic books and things, they'd have pictures of that's uh, walls and things that had signs on them that said post no bills. And then the next thing you know, you'd see it was all covered with signs or graffiti or something like that. Well, post no bills doesn't mean a damn thing here. Vietnam's kind of crazy about signs anyway. Even the smallest businesses will have huge signs. Uh, I think the sign maker is probably the richest guy 
here in Saigon. Even right here where I'm sitting, if you just turn slightly around, here where this business, uh, Bloon Mom, it's a restaurant, has tried to clean these signs off. It just doesn't work. They ruin the paint. They ruin everything on the wall. So overall, it's a real nasty thing they're doing here. The side of this big house is covered with these things. Uh, they've tried to scrape them off too. And every time they do, they're just more up here. The main themes of these little signs are loans. Usually um, just a plain old cash loan or sometimes installment loans. Most of the other signs are for services to clean out septic tanks and uh, selling property, selling houses, renting houses, uh, renting rooms, things like that. The majority of them on the poles are for septic tank service. You know, as a part of my everyday life, I really don't like looking at all those little signs that are all over the neighborhood. I wish they wouldn't put them up, but I don't think there's any way to stop it. Uh, they appear overnight. But just speaking from an old white guy's point of view, personally, I would never buy something from a company that stuck one of these things on a pole by my house or on a wall near my house. It just wouldn't happen. Anyway, it's really hot today. I'm headed home. I can't stand the heat when it's like this. It's just unbelievable. The sun's out. You just uh, can't, can't fight the heat and humidity. It's just awful. I made another socially responsible video about killer buses roaming Vietnam. This was about the sleeper buses. You know, these things run off the road. I think the driver goes to sleep more than anybody else. And uh, they run off the road and kill dozens of people. It's really a, a terrible thing and uh, sure makes me afraid to even think about riding one of these buses. Hi, this is JR, the Tech Spat in Saigon. Usually when I talk about Vietnam, I tell you all the nice things, or the interesting things, or just the unusual things. But today, I'm gonna to talk about the worst thing that I've encountered in Vietnam, and it's a means of travel called the sleeping bus. In this video, I've included some news clippings to show you the safety record of these guys. I'm also including some quotations from reviews that I found on sites that the sleeper buses advertise on. I think you'll find them pretty interesting too. My first experience with the sleeping bus was on a trip to Hui Nhan. There were about, I think five of us traveling together. I don't really have any pictures to speak. I've got, I think I've got one photo of inside the bus. Uh, this was before I became a YouTube fanatic and uh, I wasn't taking pictures of everything like I do now. I've got some nice pictures of Hui Nhan, but uh, as far as the bus goes, I really don't have any. So, so I'm depending on clips from the newspaper to show you uh, some of the buses and some of the things they get involved with. 
The bus has a metal frame inside that's two levels high. It has narrow aisles that are like 16 inches, not even big enough for me to get down sideways. The frame has metal uh, reclining seats on it uh, that are big enough for somebody about five foot six. And for somebody like me, uh, they're not very comfortable at all. In the back, there's two areas with about five seats each on two levels uh, that you can lay down. Of course, in this area, you have to lay down the entire trip. So if you're uh, going during the daytime, it's pretty uncomfortable and, and you really can't see out. Not a very pleasant experience. The worst thing about sleeping buses is their safety record. And that's what I'm gonna show you some of today. I've got some news clips to show you of exactly what goes on with the sleeping buses here. They're just an accident waiting for a place to happen. If you go somewhere in the sleeping bus, you're really taking your life in your own hands. Or actually, in the hands of a driver that may be loaded on meth, may be drunk, may be overworked and sleepy, but definitely not on his toes. You can't get any sleep on the sleeper bus. The bus driver honks the horn constantly, drives like a maniac, weaves in and out of traffic, uh, turns corners too fast. I mean, you name it, he drives like a Formula One driver on a road that really, really is dangerous. Let me tell you a little bit about our sleeping bus experience. Ray and I, uh, one of our friends, a girl, Vietnamese girl, and a couple from Philippines, uh, an American and his wife, uh, went to Quinyan on the sleeping bus. We got on the sleeper bus uh, in the evening and the plan was to be in Huignan in the morning. About um, halfway through the trip, they stop at a uh, rest stop that obviously belongs to them. And you get out for 15 minutes or so and have a chance to use the toilet and maybe catch a snack or something. Uh, the place was, it was okay, it was nothing special. At least they stopped. On the way back, the guy wouldn't stop. The driver wouldn't stop. I think the bus uh, would have gone all the way from Huignan to, to uh, Saigon without stopping had the passengers not had an uprising in the back and forced him to stop. He didn't stop at one of their rest stops. He stopped on the side of the road. So everybody got out and, and uh, did their business in the field and uh, behind rocks and trees. Not a very pleasant trip. In my opinion, a sleeper bus is something that should be avoided at all costs. Go some other way. Ride a motorbike. Go on the airplane. Take a train. Do something. But don't go on a sleeper bus. It's an overall bad experience. Overall, though, Vietnam's a wonderful experience. But sleeper buses are probably the worst thing that I've encountered since I've been here. I won't take one again. I've had three sleeper bus experiences and that's it for me. I'm not doing it again. I'll go home and pet my cats before I go on another sleeper bus trip. Anyway, this is JR, the Text Patent Saigon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank y'all for watching. In December of 2019, I made a video that I think is probably uh, more uh, appropriate for today's environment. The uh, video was about AOC. Everybody knows who AOC is now, but well, maybe back then she was just a rising star. But at any rate, uh, I think you'll like the video. It didn't get many views when I put it out, but now Ocasio-Cortez is a, a lot more famous and and the app we developed, AOC Blocker Pro, I think uh, is pretty appropriate for these days and times. This period reminds me of 1970. Baby, you spend all your morning watching the news. So many assaults. Don't you ever get tired of it? I had to get out of the house today. Rhea was just giving me all kinds of trouble about watching the news too much. 
you know, if you're an expat, you definitely want to watch the news in your home country. But lately, the news has just gotten hard to find. You can go through two or three TV shows and spend two hours and not get five minutes worth of news. Ray is so tired of me watching MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. Even my cat doesn't like it. He gets mad at me every time he hears AOC on the video. I've got to do something about it. Hey, I was really lucky. My friend told me about a great app from DC Blocker Labs. They're the people that put out Tweet Defeat and PC to BS Converter. They're a great company. I had Tweet Defeat. That app deletes all the tweets from Donald Trump instantly, so you don't have to read them, and you don't have to suffer from them. It'll also screen out every tweet that uses the word racism. That saves a lot of time when you're reading your tweets. They've also got another great app, BS to PC Converter. This app does a lot. It changes all of the BS on the news and politically correct stuff to normal language so you can understand it. So I got online and checked out the new app and here's what I found out. Their new app has to be the best of all. I installed it last night and this morning it just changed my life. I installed AOC New Scrubber Pro. It's a great app. It removed every reference of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from my smartphone and from my laptop. I'm happy. So you can condense three hours of news into about 15 minutes. You get to see all the good stuff, all the murders and rapes, car crashes, airplane crashes, the stuff you're really interested in in your home country without all the politics. What a great application. Just look in the description below and you'll see a link. It'll take you somewhere. Maybe you can find AOC News Scrubber and News Scrubber Pro online and sign up. Even the free version removes all references to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from your browser or your smartphone. It saves you a lot of time when you're looking at the news. The pro version is only $4.99. It'll also filter out the words Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and even Donald Trump. This video was helpful and it saves you some time in the morning. Be sure and sign up. Subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and you'll get all the latest news from Saigon to Vietnam. Well, if you enjoyed watching this compilation of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'd sure like to have you as part of our group. Thank y'all for watching.